It's Sammy, Pablo, uh, and this is just a glorious sound for PlayStation 1. Welcome everyone, it's uh, Blender Today Offline Edition, yeah, once again. But uh, the way we keep doing it, because there are new stuff, not so many. It's mainly about bug fixing now, it's a beta after all, right? It's a beta period. So over 120 bugs have been fixed since the last week. And uh, more counting, actually, when I was make, making this video, it's like more fixes and fixes. It's hard to show about the new stuff, but the uh, main one, I think the most important one, is the optimizations done for uh, wireframe drawing. If you had experience with like a slow wireframes or just not working at all uh, because maybe your graphics card was older, so just try it again, download the latest beta and try again because it, it really is it so much work on, on the way uh, wireframes are drawn. The other fix, but this is more isolated, is uh, for Linux users that have a Huion or XP Pen tablet. Now the pressure sensitivity works. Um, I, I tested it myself with a, an XP Pen and it's actually working. So that one too, yeah, it's not for everyone. But the other one, uh, the, the big one, there are many bug fixes, but the other big one was sni uh, Knife Project. I remember someone asking on the, on the comments that it, it wasn't, it was broken. Well, actually, it wasn't really broken. It, it wasn't there at all. So now it's there and it's in the menu, in the mesh menu of uh, when you're editing a mesh. So that's about the bug fixes. Let, let's get to the to the new stuff. So let's open Blender. There, one of the new things, actually, one of my, my favorite one, it's on the UI on the interface when you're animating, um, when you're changing values in the widgets. So in the past, in two point. Um, well, until like a few days ago, and now in the in and also in two point seven, when you animate a, uh, a property, the uh, property becomes yellow if you're in that keyframe. If you move to another keyframe, it becomes green. If you change the value, it would still be green. So at this point, if you just look at the UI, you wouldn't know uh, what like what was the keyed value and what was the change the modified one. Now in 2.8, now you can, because if you um, animate it, for example, if I insert a keyframe here and then I go to another frame, I will see it green. And if I change it, it will become um, reddish, orangish. So that is to tell you that it's not a keyframe. It's not a, um, an in-between uh, frame that it has been animated, a value that it has been animated before. It's just modified. So if you move your frame, it goes back. And if you change it, you actually can tell which of the values are changed. So pretty nice one. Um, I love this one. It's very, very useful. So uh, it's, this is a theme setting, by the way. You can change it in the uh, user preferences here under uh, the themes and then all the way to the bottom here. Um, frames changed and changed selected for the color when you selected the, the widget. So that's a, that's a pretty nice one. And uh, in another UI topic, it's when you, but well, not really UI topic, but actually when you are um, rendering. So if you are familiar with the way metadata works, metadata, data, data, tomato, tomatoes, if um, you're familiar with it, in the metadata, you can just enable pretty much um, almost yeah, you can many things, not everything, because I have a little thingy with this. So basically, you can enable the date, render time, and you can even render it into the image. So when you actually render something, so let's let's render something a bit smaller, just so it doesn't take forever. Um, you will see this. You will see the metadata just burned in the um, the actual frame. They have the date, the render time, super handy when you are like rendering animation or play blasts or OpenGL renders. Now uh, there's a new option called host name, which is basically the name of the um, like the computer over your network. It's not the actual name of the computer. Um, it's it's just the, the identifier over the network. So if you're familiar with how uh, render farms work, for example, it's uh, very handy because it will appear there in the, in the render in the metadata. If you don't render it, this will be part of the metadata of the image. And you can know which machine rendered that frame. So it's pretty handy. Uh, in this case, my name, uh, my computer is called Chal10, which is the same you can see when you're 
um, on, a, on a terminal or if you just type has host name. So, yep, that is pretty handy. Um, but actually I had a kind of a bittersweet uh, feeling with this because when it was added, it was like, oh, that's awesome. But can we just have custom? Can, can we just have like, why not somebody just makes a very nice, um, I don't know, some like a scripting UI for this. That would be awesome. Of course, having the option is great, but maybe we could have by this point, instead of keep adding in uh, checkboxes, we could have. Uh, is there anybody out there, pretty please, willing to do this kind of stuff? Would be awesome. Imagine if you could just, um, I don't know, whatever you can find on the on, on the terminal here, just like VPY, maybe data, maybe not all kinds of access to stuff, but I don't know, there could be a way. Uh, I know if other software is doing it and people have been asking me <laughs> when, when they meet me. Um, another UI thing that changed this week is a new editor. Yes, there is a new editor. But don't get too excited. It's just another editor that got, got split. So since forever, the name of the place where you receive your renders and you edit your, um, your UVs was the same. And it was called UV slash image editor. And it's also like a, a masking editor and it's a painting editor. So it's so many things that at least one of them had to be split. And that was part of the, the, the process that went also with other editors, such as the node editor. So um, here in the node editor, remember, uh, it was called node editor. Now it's called shader and the texture node and compositing. It could also, I think we could even keep going further with the world editor and such, but um, like, because now you have to change it from here, which I think we should bring it back to three icons instead of, um, like this drop down because it, this means you have to do one extra click instead of um, two. And even the line style, we don't really access it so often because it's freestyle and even it shouldn't be on if freestyle is off. But anyway, um, the uh, new editor basically is the image editor. It is now split into two parts. So we still don't have the mask editor, but um, maybe in the future we could. So now uh, you have the UV editor. So you know that when you are in that editor, you will always see if you have a, um, if you are in edit mode, of course, and you actually have a UV on your mesh, you would see it there. So no more of the confusing thing that uh, which mode I'm in or not anymore. Um, because it could happen before in, uh, in 2.0, seven even if you're in the uv image editor and you had if you're in edit mode if you didn't have a uv you wouldn't see it but then you could also be in like paint or mask a mask you could still see it but in painting you wouldn't and uh, you would see this cursor so i'm glad that it's getting a bit more sane now it's going like each editor having its own thing we don't have to do so many checks if this kind of editor or not or if this type is enabled so uh, I think this uh, moved in the right direction. Then uh, speaking of notes editor and editing in general, is that now when you're editing a, um, a material, which usually now happens in the node editor, right? When you're testing your, changing your settings there. Um, now in the end panel, in the sidebar, you will find all the, um, properties of the material the same way you would see it when you're here in the uh, actual material settings. So um, before, if you're editing with notes, which is basically every material now, you would see uh, the settings here or the settings on the notes or in the properties. So now you have it three times, not confusing at all. But this one, you could have it collapse. This one, you could have it in like render stuff, like for EV and whatever. And then the uh, other properties, such as the viewport display for, for, this, uh, for the viewport or the settings for transparency, you can now do everything uh, full screen here because everything is accessible. So it's, it's a, it basically a way to have it uh, so you don't have to always be in having the properties editor now. Um, so it's a bit more, it's a shader editor, right? After all, so it, it kind of makes sense. Um, for the world settings also, Look at that. It's empty. Why it's empty? Huh? Ah, because I'm not using notes. 
So useful. And then it shows up. Whoa, okay, I found the, I found the bug. Yay. Bug finding. Okay. Uh, that's a good one. Blender today, finding bugs since uh, January 2018. Next topic. Um, I think that's about it with the with the UI stuff. The um, the other news, the, the big news, is that if you have if you're one of, a, a lucky enough person to have one of the latest and greatest NVIDIA graphics cards, the the uh, the, the Turing version uh, or the, the the naming, or the uh, they're also called RTX. 20 something series cycles now can render with that this is for CUDA rendering this doesn't mean that it's using the fancy ray tracing stuff not yet it's just so uh, you can use your CUDA cores with that which has plenty so it's also good news um, that's the one uh, that's a nice first step but uh, the the other news for cycles are not so good and they are for um, Mac users. So if you have a Mac and you have a, uh, if you use uh, OpenCL rendering, OpenCL with the um, OpenCL rendering uh, instead of CUDA, it's not supported anymore for Mac OS. So yeah, they're basically the reason it's it's on 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 Apple. They're not supporting the. I think the the issue is something with the compiler. Um, so it, it's it's not on Blender side to fix. It's on the compiler itself. So since it's deprecated, since um, OpenCL is also deprecated on Mac, then uh, yeah, it's it's hard to for Blender to keep up with that. Um, so for now, it's uh, deprecated. And I think that's pretty much it. I think I just covered everything about the new the new stuff. And there is the uh, I think it showed last week to the new um, tool in the grease pencil, the arc for drawing arcs. So basically, it's just yeah, you use it. You press F for flipping. It's, that's kind of weird. And then you can draw an arc. You can also close it with C. Um, but it, I think this was just a preparation for another tool that is coming. It's not yet in Blender 2.8 branch. It's on a separate branch on the Grease Pencil object. Uh, that, that's the name of the branch. And that's where also many other good, good, good stuff are, are being uh, brewed to put into in, in Blender 2.8 upcoming edition. So um, I won't show that because it's in a different branch. I'm going to keep it for next week. It's probably going to be there already. And I'm going to quickly show you the um, read, read the, the, the news, the commit logs and the, from the meeting. And it's only been 13 or 14 minutes. So actually, we can get to the questions, which you guys did pretty much why I ask. I ask uh, to ask for you to ask questions. And there is over 300. So thank you. We'll we'll try to cover as many as possible. This is code.blender.org. This is uh, where the where all the blog posts are um, written by the developers or people like official Blender development uh, blog posts and uh, announcements and stuff. This week I also added the um, a few bit more information so you can find more things more easily in one place. So this is code.blender.org. You probably already know it. Now it also features the latest videos from um, the Blender development blog, the official Blender development blog, uh, video log, video YouTube channel thingy. And um, the, which uh, I'm not the only one putting videos out there, but also other developers put videos. So you should also follow that. And on the right, now you have the meeting notes. Yay. Because Brecht is not only awesome to code great stuff. He's also putting together all the, um, the, the meeting notes. He's putting them on the developer, the blender, uh, sorry, dev talk, um, forums. So in, um, you can find them there much, much more easily has a few pictures. So it's a bit better than having to read the, um, you see it's super complete and it's a bit better than having to read the ugly, uh, uh yeah. A bit ugly and it also supports rss it's actually an rss feed so you can get it there too and um that being said let's let's go through it let's go through with this nice ui or let's go let's, let's go vintage let's go here um i actually prefer monofonts for this 
Um, so yeah, cycles, the new Turing cards is what I mentioned already. OpenCL being dropped, unfortunately. And everything, I think I, I covered pretty much everything. Merging branches, what does it mean? For the regular user, it doesn't mean anything. So don't worry. What does it mean? Uh, basically, the only change you will see, you will see is that um, the one that is called master branch here is going to become 2.8. So when you download master, it's going to become 2.8. And the uh, other branch, the two point, um, the one that now has 2.79, which is called master now, is going to become a Blender 2.7 branch. So right now, the, the, the actual um, branch, so if you go to Blender, to your Blender source, you will see that your, um, your branch is called Blender 2.8. And the um, new one is going to be, this one is going to become master, and then 2.7 is going to, master is going to become 2.7, just for legacy. And also for like maybe last uh, minute, uh, support and bug fixes because the goal is to have at least one version ready for production. Like beta, we know it's it's been used for in production for, by crazy people in Amsterdam and other places in the world, but it's not really uh, recommended for production yet. So at least one version has to be around for that, which is the 2.7 branch, 2.79. Um, so yeah, that that's the main thing basically. And the 2.8 at some point is gonna become blocked and uh, deleted basically. So blocked, it means that for example, if I'm coding with the 2.8 branch and then the developers change the name to master and I didn't know about that. And then I push my changes, may, there might be a chance that it becomes, the, it gets created again. So to avoid that, they just block it. Then, uh, oh yeah, the wiki has a new um, has a new theme. It's not really crazy news because it's still not really uh, mobile and responsive completely, 100%. Uh, it is, but it could be better. And uh, But the good news is that there are news, right? That's the good news about the wiki. And uh, you can find all kinds of um, information here. The building blender, actually, I checked it out the other day because I wanted to make the video about building blender. But I wanted to start with the Windows version, but it's so complicated to, to build in on Windows um, that with the slow internet that I have here, I will have to download like half a world and things. So I'm, I will try and, and find faster internet to do it or just do it when I get home. And uh, that's it. There is a new developer also that joined Sebastian Parvork started uh, for bug testing and triaging and fixing as well. So yes, the development fund is going great. It's $21,500 already. So, but this is recently, so it's not like suddenly there's 20K. It's like at the end of the month, it's gonna be 20K and then the next month and the next month. So this is just amazing. We are approaching the five developers per month, um, um, and which, is, which is amazing. So right now, these are the official uh, people that are working for Blender at the moment. So it's it's crazy. Jax, Philip, Sergey, Clema. This already is way more than we had a few months ago. So pretty neat. Join the development fund. Join the fund. So I think I'm pretty much done with that. All the things are there. I have a few questions for you. I'm gonna ask you at the uh, towards the end. Let's get to the questions that you asked ourselves. Why is this video here? Oh. Eek. Um, okay. Eek. Okay, there. Okay, let, let's see the questions. I don't want to see this on the side. What I do usually, I just enter in the development mode and then I just remove the, um, the, the whole tab, the related tab. So um, here, the related, go away. I want to read things here. So apologies for the low budgetness. Yeah, a lot of people were saying, hey, it's not really low budget, but it's it kind of is low budget. I just uh, <laughs> I took a picture so you can see it. Um, and, and 
This is <laughs> this is me at the moment right now. So it's it's, it's a Samsung uh, microphone. Somebody was asking uh, what what I'm using. I'm using a little Samsung Go uh, microphone, which is pretty decent. If you're here listening to it right now, I have a new camera now. There, uh, I'm, I I bought a new cable for my camera. It's a, a Sony RX100 Mark V, if I'm not wrong. Um, this is how I'm doing it. I I just borrow my screen from my mom. And uh, I'm using OBS. Somebody was asking there too, and I have a a um, little notes on the Google Keep um, just so I know what to talk about during the week. Next question. That wasn't really a question. I just just started talking. Um, confirm Pablo has an addiction. I kind of have an addiction. Yeah, donate to this poor person. <laughs> you know, you can't donate now because it's not live. Maybe. I uh, should consider other ways. Let's continue. <laughs> Thank you very much also, que sepas tremenos. <laughs> array should stay as Array. Yes, I asked that last week and it's pretty clear that Array is very um, easy to, to understand. So let's go with that. Then uh, people telling me to enjoy my life. Thank you, I should, but this is also fun. So yeah, kind of enjoying it. I'm gonna uh, travel this week, Kent, again. Um, Shift C to enter the cursor. Yes, this also agreed that everybody seems to agree that it's a good shortcut. Um, here, somebody said because I mentioned that I could use to 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 uh, left click select, and uh, this is the truth that they wanted to hide from you from years. No, 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 it's not the truth. I have absolutely zero issues with right click select. This, uh, I'm just getting used to it because when I'm doing videos or training, I, I want to use the default, whatever every, anybody else is gonna use. So that is the, um, that's the reason, but I have absolutely no issues. Even when switching from one software to the other, I don't know, it's just like the brain switches. It's just, I still like right click select. I just got used to it because I have to do demos, right? Anyway, the Wuxian says, and many other people are uh, discussing how the custom orientation thingy should work. Basically, uh, last week, for if you didn't see it, I asked you if um, when you're transforming, the first time you press an axis, for example, if you're press, um, you see, I right click now there. Okay, so if I press um, G to translate and then set to lock to an axis, constraint to an axis, then the first time in Blender is global. The first time is the global axis, and then the second time goes to local, which is usually the custom transform. When you're in global, it's that's an exception, like a little hack. So it's just so because otherwise it would be global, global doesn't make sense. But if you have it like in local or normal, then it will, and the second time it will um, constrain to that. But there were discussions about if it should be changed. It should be always the first time, whatever you chose as a transform orientation or not. So uh, I think there are mixed opinions. Um, most of people, I think, arg argue that if you pick that custom transform, then it should just stay like that. But um, yeah, there are, uh, there are mixed opinions. So maybe a user setting. Um, Please fix the control click to cut links. Yes, um, when I was doing a demo uh, last week, I was trying to cut the links between these two nodes and the, um, the select box, the tool that is by default, doesn't let you because control, like usually the, the shortcut is control, click and drag. It's used to subtract from your selection. So you do control and then it subtracts, which is, the least useful thing you want to do, because if you're used to the tool, there is a tool for that, which is so not handy and is a slower workflow than before. And it shouldn't. Blender should be Blender 2.8 should be as fast or faster than 2.7. So the other way of doing it is just basically having the select tool by default. Then Control and click to cut is um, present again, it's, it's available. And then you can still do the other ones. You can do shift click to add a, one of those little um, control like points, or uh, you can also press alt and drag to, um, to unlink that, uh, that node and grab it around. 
So um, yeah, I don't like that. And maybe we should just change the basic tool, the, the default tool for the node editor to be um, select. I mean, the live stream, yeah, it wasn't live. <laughs> um, any plans on bringing back the F6 last operator floating window? It is there, it hasn't gone anywhere. Actually, if you just, um, yeah, whatever. So if you just move something and then wanna click it, you go to edit, adjust last operation. So it's it's there. Uh, you can right click, assign shortcut F6. And now if you press F6, you will see it and it's still there. So that hasn't changed. It's still the same. Um, if you just add your shortcut, it's still there. So why is F6 not there anymore? It's because as part of the minimal key map concept in 2.8, that not every key should be used for something. In 2.7, every key was used. So you basically had no room for adding your own keys. In 2.8, the philosophy is that now you should customize your Blender more because Blender has become so big that maybe you don't always need to have I don't know, like shear for modeling, you know, like even even though it's still here, control Alt shift S, <laughs> but um, maybe if, if you're into sculpting or, or, or video editing, maybe you don't need that. Maybe you want a different shortcut. So um, the minimal shortcut philosophy comes from that. And the uh, keys from F5 to F10 have been all free. So F5, 6, 7, 8, nine and 10, they're all free for you to do whatever you want, add it to your own preferences. Then F11 is to bring the, the it's just like in 2.7, is to bring the uh, latest render and F12 is for rendering, just like it used to be. So I actually wanted to ask you a question. Okay, I'm gonna ask you now. The F12, I've been so annoying now that every time I press F12, it opens the window and it's, it's like this one. Um, because it opens it in full screen and then if you press escape, it doesn't always work. It depends on the way you work it. I don't know. Um, do you use it? Do you prefer to change your render to display mode to like image editor like it used to be? So instead of, oh, it's not even listening to me now. Render display mode, image editor. So I do something and then F12. Okay, there it works. Now it opened a, um, image editor. So basically this option, it is how it used to be before by default. And basically it picks the biggest editor that is not an image editor, like with a used uh, image and uh, it makes it a render by default. Maybe there could be an option to switch to the rendering workspace if it's there, if it's available, maybe that would be nice. Next one. Um, can you say one of the reasons to have different mesh context menu? It doesn't make sense. In 2.7, the W menu will always show the same content as far as I remember. Yes, in the 2.7 version, if the, the W menu was always the same. So basically if you press W, you always had the special key, it wasn't context aware. So even if you were in like face select, you will see the same things as in the um, the, if you're in vertex, control tab, edge or vertex, you will always see the same menu. The reason why in 2.8 this has changed is because if you want to have always the same menu in edit mode, you can use the quick menus. So the quick menu is, a, is context aware, but context on the mode itself. So if you're in, um, in edit mode and you wanna, for example, um, add, say, um, subdivide, I'm gonna add that one, and then I want to add merge, for example. And then this is for uh, when I'm in editing the vertices. But if I, for example, want to edit the uh, faces and then I have a hard time, okay. Then um, the faces will show a different menu and actually it's showing the same, right? Right click or maybe because I'm in, I know here, bridge faces, for example, this is a different menu. So you can 
add it to your favorites. Now you can have your own mixed uh, context. Uh, so it's like you can have your own specials menu and these will always be available when you are in edit mode. So if you are in object, you won't see it. You'll see different um, settings that you can apply in like Shade Smooth, for example, add to quick favorites and it's always gonna be there. And every time you go to edit mode, you will always see this one. So you can build your own um, quick favorites and it's actually more powerful than the specials because now you have both. Now you have your own specials menu and your own um, context aware menu. So I th I th that's, that's my, my goal for it. I think it, I think it makes sense and it makes it a bit more powerful. That said, the quick menus could, so, could use so much improvements. And I think we will see it because it's super popular, this, this, this new setting, but there is this new feature, but there, it's just not uh, so simple to remove things and you can't rearrange them, for example. So we need a, an editor for this. And uh, hopefully somebody will make it and not an add-on, but just built in Blender because it's just a basic tool. Um, wink, wink. <laughs> but yes, uh, next. Um, for an animator using, oh, ab about the, the, another discussion about the um, custom transform. Um, another question, where is the clipping? I'm gonna skip those because I already gave my uh, point of view and it was mainly about a discussion but I'll try to focus on the questions themselves. We already passed half an hour, so I'm gonna give it another few minutes of questions. Um, where is the clipping border Alt B? Unfortunately, this one is not so simple to bring to the new um, Workbench engine, and uh, I think I'm gonna sneeze, I hope not. That would be horrible, I don't wanna, I wanna do it all in one cut, okay. Alt B, sorry, geez, I'm crying. You know when you try to hold the sneeze? Okay. Alt B, the clipping border in 2.7. Um, this one that is so handy because you can actually draw like a, a, you can cut through your mesh and you can see through, it's super handy. It's awesome. But in 2.8 um, is, um, for some reason that I don't know, it's, it, they they tr tried. <laughs> it's not that it's just like ah oh, we're not gonna do it. It's just uh, it's not as simple, and it will mean like super slow or redrawing a lot of um, like a lot of times the same um, geometry. So I bet they have good reasons to uh, not bring it. Maybe now, maybe maybe towards the, the beta there is uh, other developers helping out, and maybe it happens. Uh, but otherwise, it might be in two eighty one uh, or in the future. So yeah, I'm also sad to not see this one right now, but something such as more uh, difficult. Maybe it just needs another thinking. You know, when you when you try it and, and tackle one issue and it just doesn't work and then you try it a month later and it was simple or you, you have a sparkle of uh, ideas. Okay, next, um, custom orientations. Another one. What about the Blendrick add-on? 2.8 support it, supports it. Yes, it uh, we are actually using in in spring in the open movie project at the Blender Studio, but I think it's that version hasn't been uh, published yet because it the the API was constantly changing and changing and changing. So it's just like it's just it's hard to maintain, right? To to publish it and then oh something changed, we have to fix it again and fix it again. So uh, we're testing it, we're using it uh, on the studio. So I bet towards more when the, the API is more stable, which is gonna be, uh, now it should be pretty much stable, but there's still some cleaning uh, cleanups to do that I know Jax have, have done in, uh, in the Blendrick add-on. So I believe it will come back. It's just um, not, not right, not right now. So welcome to the dark, dark side. Oh, for the left click, no, I'm not in the dark side yet. Kind of, I just, I just got used to it. That doesn't mean anything, please believe me. Uh, thank you, David, for the nice uh, comment. Yes, Cedric says, uh, Pablo, it seems Blender needs to have proper window management to keep the window on top. Um, not really, actually, because I mean, I, I have that on my, built-in on my um, 
on my window manager. You just right click, always on top, and you can just keep using it. Um, but I, I don't use it that often, and it will be very annoying if every time I open the, the Blender, the preferences or the F12, like the render, if it was all the time, it would be pretty annoying that it's always there. So I like to have it on demand. I right click uh, always on top. This is my um, window manager. I don't know if Windows has that feature or Mac. I don't know if they have that feature either, but it's. Um, I don't use it that often. I use it sometimes, but um, yeah, maybe Blender should have it built in. But I don't. I don't think it's like a um, game changer or anything. Um, otherwise, I like. I remember GIMP used to be like that with the floating windows. Uh, first thing I changed when I when they managed to finally implement the one window um, thingy. So um, also, will it will it have a call for content for the studio lighting? No, I don't think it's uh, uh, the studio lighting needs that. The, if you haven't seen the last episode, you should check it out. Basically, it's about the um, the ways to edit the studio light. Um, this is something very personal, I think, and it doesn't really make sense to make a call for like. It doesn't make sense to have so many I, anyway. Um, so yeah. Um, keep up, keep pop up visible could help too. No pop ups, <laughs> but yeah, maybe it could help, but eh, less pop ups. Or what do you mean, like this one? Yeah, maybe like this one, I wouldn't mind. Since Blender is OpenGL, it can be anywhere, right? Or like this one. So always there, like something like this, maybe. Yeah. Um, I know that it's not the easiest thing to do. Blender's UI code is not the easiest and simplest to tackle. Uh, maybe that's why we don't have so many UI developers. <laughs> uh, thank you, Piotr, for the nice message. Um, yes, we're all learning new things. <laughs> like the M key uh, that I showed in the previous episode. When you're in local mode, uh, you press M and you can take objects away from local view. Um, so the thing I'm having with the select, eight select to all the select, but no, I think I'm having a lot of trouble ah, with the A to select and Alt A, a to deselect. Um, so wouldn't be the answer make select all Alt A? So basically inverting it, no. Because if uh, every everywhere in Blender, Alt, it means like the opposite of whatever you're doing. So if suddenly Alt A was for selecting, then it just, yeah, it's just backwards. So it's not very consistent. So it, I think it should stay all A to select, Alt A to deselect. If you don't like that behavior, you can get the behavior from 2.7 um, back and just change it from input, select all toggles. Um, okay, it's uh, already getting past time. So I'm gonna go with five more questions. And uh, right, James, please keep. Okay, this doesn't count as a, as a question. Uh, I'm a cranky old man. I am too, and uh, I'm gonna get off your lawn. Sorry. <laughs> um, another one. Yusuf says, I just hope you'll change the default local view shortcut to be not in the numpad. There are a lot of Blender users on laptop out there. Well, I'm on a laptop actually right now, and I do have the shortcut, but I mean, I shouldn't just. Maybe it's just my my laptop with my uh, layout. Layout is a, the international uh, English, and it has the the slash. But maybe it should be part of a uh, like a, a pie menu. I would have more room here. Or maybe it's just a different shortcut. Which shortcut would you recommend for uh, view mode for the local view? My Filippo says, any, ex, any ext, est, estimations when uh, Eevee will be able to bake on a texture the same way Cycles is? Uh, actually, there is no estimate for that. It's, it's not planned uh, yet, um, but it could be. Just, just get people to, uh, I don't know, right-click select or something just to get people excited about the feature and developers excited. Um, another about this one, Master Sion said, Damn, Pablo, you look tired. I, that's my secret. I always look tired. Um, no, it's it's mainly because it's okay. It's 
I don't know, super late. It's probably like 2.43 a.m. Yeah, it's almost 3 a.m. Maybe that explains things. Um, I just like nights. I don't know. Even though I look like crap. Um, question about a possible feature that may not exist. Is there a way to preview blend files before opening them? Yeah, actually, when you, um, when you open a, a file, you can just... Um, you can preview here and you will see the preview. So it's just enable previews there. I was actually trying to convert this one the other day from uh, from Blender to 40 or 30 something to uh, to 2.8. It was fun. Anyway, um, let's more questions. This file is from from like 2000 five or something so anyway i don't like that link cut i don't either we should have a different uh, way of dealing with it two more questions why is spacebar playback after the democratic vote to have it a search it wasn't a democratic vote i just asked for it it's not a, it's not a it's a poll it's not a, um, a vote like and because one it was only on like it was on twitter and it was on youtube and we shouldn't exclude people from, like, we shouldn't make those things a, a vote because we will be excluding people not in those platforms. And even then, even if we make it in Blender.org or DevTalk or whatever, it, I don't think it should, is the best way to, to go. It's a good way of having a, a clear, like, seeing, like, clearly what people want, what the community wants. But um, consistency should be above and and efficiency should be above everything and um that said i think playback maybe is not the most efficient because it's only for animators right but still search is probably more efficient yes i'm contradicting myself but i just wanted to make the point that the the, the voting wasn't it's just a poll you know it's not a it's not like casting your vote will change will change it it's just nice to see what people think um I would rename the screw modifier to spin modifier. Yeah, screw sounds kind of, sounds kind of, uh, did you try the screw modifier? Um, anyway, um, I don't want to be a left click selector. No, I don't. Happy that you did it. Thank you, three ton, three R ton. I'm also happy. Um, so would you say 2.80, not 2.80? The number of after the decimal are always read as individual digits, but the version is actually two, a, uh, 80 like 8 e like um that that's the actual name of the version i wanted to talk about it actually because there has been a discussion on the on the the committers um list about the versioning but i think i'm gonna um uh, i'm gonna make a, a different a different video about it um there is a bit of discussion about if lender should be 3.0 or this one should be 2.8 or 3.0 but I, uh, I I have my own opinion and I want to make it as news because it's not news it's just my own opinion so I, I, I think I might if I make it I will just make a different video for it and just rant in that one so you can skip it if you're not interested and you just want to keep up to date with everything blender with this I will retired and I will try and, and and have some sleep because I keep looking like crap and people are telling me about it and uh, I, I think it's just my 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 constant way of looking I will grab this crappy face and put it full screen so I can in the meantime look for the song that goes with everything and um, I will start it in through three I'm not even able to talk anymore there thank you everyone for staying this long um, I had a great time actually I, I am a bit of a, I had a bit of a flu but I still managed to do it so I'm pretty happy and uh, and I, I hope I can see you again next week maybe one day later maybe one day later but still here thank you for coming I'll see you again next week bye bye